Hi there, so today I wanted to talk a bit about temperature compensation and what actually happens if you ignore it which I've been doing over the winter my batteries have been going down to like negative 1, negative 2 degrees at their coldest and I've still been charging them at the 25 degrees celsius set point um, now that's very stupid because as you can see at 25 degrees you may have charged a 24 volt bank to 29.6 now I've actually got a full spreadsheet of this which I'll put in the video description to help you but um, you're meant to have them at over 30.86 when they're really cold to charge them and even higher still to equalise now to equalise what I was doing was putting them to 30.94 when they're still cold and this has resulted in a bit of sulfation this cell here I can only get it to go up to 1.275 uh, specific gravity while these two here are up to 1.28 the other batteries don't seem to have suffered that much um, but it's just this one here so I'm equalising just this battery um, so I'll give this cell a test and we'll have a look this cell has actually got a distinct smell of sulphur or eggs coming from it and that's because it's sulfated so this one I had it on equalised today for over two and a half hours that's just this battery now I can only get it to go up to just over 1.27 while these two cells here are, are at 1.28 so that's a fair little difference so I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix this cell here and um, we're going to leave it on equalise a bit longer and I'll see what happens but the rest of them seem to be fine but uh, with lead acid in particular not all cells are created equal and you will get some variation and it seems to be this cell here that suffered the worst from it these two batteries here these two are actually a bit newer than the, these ones here there's a bit of a couple of months of, or more of age between them because if you remember I used to have a 12 volt system where I'd, I'd have these two in series just by themselves uh, with this big one here before I bought the other ones so Maybe the age difference has caused a bit of a problem as well, but ideally I would have went with lithium, but I can't seem to find any sellers of those big thunder sky cells, the big yellow things you get in the UK. So that's a bit of a problem there. So I've been stuck with lead acid. So that is what happens if you ignore temperature compensation. It is very, very important for lead acid. So have a look at the description, copy it because uh, and it is really important so print it out and keep it in next to your battery bank if you don't have an automatic charger and then what you could do is just adjust your charge controller every day just to make sure that it's in line with the temperature another thing is this charge controller um, that's a new one that I got it can only really go up to about 29.3 or 29.4 volts at its maximum voltage setting under sort of overcast skies it doesn't control the voltage that well and then when the sun comes out but behind a cloud that's when you get especially massive amounts of power it can sometimes like go up to 31 volts this is actually a wind charge controller so when my batteries are full it's actually going to heat water so I'll heat water here or and the bigger one. But if I want to boil eggs, I use the smaller one because it heats up quicker. And if I just want some warm water for cleaning a bike or washing a car or whatever, I'll use my bigger one. But I'm replacing this charge controller soon with a different wind charge controller, a PWM one, which supposedly switches at 20 kilohertz, which should control the voltage really well. So I'll update you on that when I get it. And it is currently night time, so there's nothing happening today. And that is my huge blocking diode. That can take uh, 60 amps. But uh, my solar panels will probably only ever hit 40 amps at 24 volts if I'm really lucky. But yeah, thanks for watching that. And uh, 
hope it brings home how important temperature compensation on batteries actually is.